Imagine driving down a lonely road at midnight, when suddenly you see two glowing red eyes and a pair of massive wings stalk you from the darkness. Well, in 1966, in the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, this nightmare became a reality. The creature they encountered that night became known as the Mothman, a legend that has fascinated and terrified generations. Was it an omen of doom, or just a wild hoax? Join us as we unravel the mystery behind the infamous Mothman. From the first chilling sighting to the unfortunate event that changed the town forever, we'll uncover the secrets of this mysterious creature that haunts the Appalachian landscape. But before we delve into the legend of the Mothman, I just wanted to thank you all for watching. Every single view motivates me to continue and I really appreciate every single one of you, so thank you for being here. Now, before we talk about the main topic of today's video, I want to talk a bit about Appalachia and the city of Point Pleasant. In the heart of the Appalachian region, West Virginia enchants with its rugged beauty and rich history shaped by coal mining. The Appalachian Mountains, stretching from southern New York to northern Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi, are among the oldest mountain ranges in the world, dating back over 480 million years. The region played a crucial role in the history of early American exploration and settlement. Indigenous peoples, including the Cherokee, Iroquois and Shawnee, lived in these mountains long before European settlers arrived. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the Appalachians became a frontier for westward expansion and were central to the coal mining industry, which shaped the economic and cultural landscape of the area. This region is known for its rugged terrain, dense forests, and unique cultural heritage shaped by early settlers from Scotch-Irish, English, and German backgrounds. The isolation provided by the mountains has fostered a distinct way of life, including traditional music, crafts, and a rich tradition of storytelling. Appalachian folklore is filled with tales of supernatural occurrences, mysterious creatures, and ghostly encounters. Notable legends include the Mothman of West Virginia, the Flatwoods Monster, the Snallygaster, and many more. Stories of witches, curses, and plenty of haunted locations reflect the region's superstitions and folk wisdom. These tales serve to entertain, explain the unknown, and pass down traditions, creating a shared sense of identity and community among the people of Appalachia. There's a saying in Appalachia that goes like this. If something whistles strangely at you, or you hear a name being called, or hear the voice of somebody who can't possibly be there, no you didn't. You move on and pretend nothing happened. The city of Point Pleasant is the county seat of Mason County, West Virginia. It's a small city with a rich historical background located at the confluence of the Ohio and Kanawha Rivers. Established in 1794, the city is best known for the Battle of Point Pleasant, which took place in 1774. This significant conflict between colonial Virginia militia and Native American forces led by Chief Cornstalk is sometimes considered the first battle of the American Revolutionary War. The battle, which resulted in colonial victory, had a lasting impact on the region and is commemorated by a monument in the city. Throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries, Point Pleasant developed as a key transportation and trading hub due to its strategic river location. Today, Point Pleasant maintains its historical charm while continuing to serve as a reminder of the region's early American heritage. Coming back to our main topic, the Mothman was sighted in many places across West Virginia and the surrounding states. But the largest number of sightings happened near the old West Virginia Ordnance Works, an area known by the locals as the TNT area. The West Virginia Ordnance Works is an abandoned munitions depot to the north of Point Pleasant dating back to the Second World War. The facility manufactured ammunition and dynamite during its operation. The surrounding area is mostly dense forest dotted with numerous grassy clearings and thick concrete domes called igloos used to store barrels of gunpowder. The area is also riddled with abandoned tunnels, most of which have been collapsed, been sealed off or became flooded. 
a wildlife sanctuary, the McClintic Wildlife Management now encompasses the area. In 1979, fishermen in the TNT area reported that chemicals had seeped into the ponds, causing it to be labeled an environmental disaster. By 1983, the TNT area was among the country's most polluted sites. It was here in the TNT area, on the cold night of November 15, 1966, three days after the first sighting, that two young couples would encounter this bizarre creature. Roger and Linda Scarberry were driving in Roger's black 57 Chevy Bel Air with Steve and Mary Mollette through the area around midnight, while Linda noticed two large, glowing red eyes in the darkness behind the old North power plant and screamed. They soon learned that these eyes belonged to something that looked frankly human, about 7 feet tall, with wings folded against his back. Roger stalled in the road for a minute, inspecting the strange creature. The four realized immediately that their spectacle was no ordinary bird. The true horror began, however, when the creature spread its wings and pursued them down Highway 62 to the Point Pleasant city limits at speeds exceeding 100 miles an hour. The four arrived in town, startled and confused, and with no sign of the mysterious bird that had chased them. Roger parked his car at the edge of town, and they discussed their encounter, eventually deciding that what they saw was nothing more than an aberrant bird, and in an attempt to face their fears, they again drove down towards the TNT area. It wasn't long before they saw the creature again, apparently waiting for them beside Route 62. The couples now realized that the stalker was no bird, but in the instant that the car's headlights landed on the creature, it lifted vertically into the air with tremendous speed and disappeared above the tree line. This time, when they arrived in town, they went to the Mason County Courthouse and told their story to Sheriff George Johnson and Deputy Miller Halstead. Two hours later, the city police began investigating the area, only to return empty-handed. The next day, a press conference was held, and the local press began reporting on the story, causing others to come forward with previous and future sightings. This was the major event that started it all. In the November 16th issue of the Point Pleasant Register, the strange encounter was brought to the public eye with the headline, Couple Sees Man-Sized Bird Creature Something. The strange encounter in the TNT area was a harrowing experience for everyone involved. On the morning of November 16, 1966, Linda Scarberry was rushed to the hospital by her father after experiencing a nervous breakdown. On the phenomenon, Roger Scarberry stated, I quote, I'm a hard guy to scare, but last night I was for getting out of there. The earliest sighting was reported by five gravediggers who saw a huge creature with a large wingspan flying above the tree line. They came forward after the Scarberry story was published, further solidifying the existence of the creature. Apparently, there was an attempt to call it the Mason Bird Monster, but thankfully that name didn't gain any popularity. So inspired by the Batman comics and the TV show that were quite popular at the time, they came up with the name Mothman. Now this is where the story gets even more interesting. Some reports say that after the sightings gained popularity, the town was visited by mysterious men dressed in black suits. These so-called men in black are often said to be government agents related to UFO cases, appearing to question, interrogate, or even intimidate witnesses into silence. Their reported presence makes this whole story even more intriguing. If it's true that they were seen around there, it suggests that some kind of cover-up was being attempted, like the one in Roswell or other UFO-related events. We will get back to the Man in Black at a later point in the video, so stay tuned. There are people who say that the whole thing was a case of mass hysteria because of the rapid number of encounters reported in just a few weeks. Some claim that the Mothman broke into their homes and tried to steal their babies. Others said that they saw it in the trees just hanging around or watching them. Of course, over time, people tried to find logical explanations. American author and self-proclaimed skeptic Joe Nickel claimed that due to the case's popularity, many hoaxes followed, such as balloons with red lights attached to them launched by construction workers. 
Nickel also stated that the Mothman stories were actually sightings of barred owls, suggesting that the glowing red eyes were just the red eye effect caused by the reflection of flashlights and other light sources. The red color is seen because the light passes through the pupils and reflects off the retina at the back of the eyeball. The retina's bridge blood vessels give the reflection of a red appearance. Another theory is that the Mothman was a sandhill crane, a large bird with red spots around its eyes. People suggested that the red glowing eyes were just these red spots on the crane's head. But the most interesting story is that it was indeed a sandhill crane, but it was a mutated sandhill crane. Due to the toxic chemicals dumped in the swamps by the munitions factory, it's possible that the crane mutated somehow. The Mothman story came to an end in 1967. On December 15th, tragedy struck the small town when the Silver Bridge collapsed into the Ohio River, killing 46 people. Investigations revealed that the collapse was due to the failure of a single eye bar in the suspension chain. The eye bar had developed a small crack that over time grew due to stress and corrosion. This type of bridge design, known as an eye bar link suspension bridge, was particularly vulnerable because the failure of one single component could lead to the catastrophic failure of the entire structure. The collapse of the Silver Bridge had a profound impact on the community and led to significant changes in bridge design and inspection protocols across the United States. It highlighted the need for regular and rigorous inspections and led to the development of more robust engineering standards to ensure the safety and reliability of bridges. After the disaster, the town fell into an eerie silence, as the Mothman sightings suddenly stopped. Some began to speculate whether the Mothman was a harbinger of doom, a mysterious entity warning of impending disaster. As the legend of the Mothman started to fade into paranormal history, debates continued regarding its origin and motives. Undoubtedly, it remains one of West Virginia's most significant pieces of modern folklore. Whether it was a supernatural omen, or a series of misidentified phenomena, the legend lives on in tales passed down through generations. The story was presented to a wider audience by author and journalist John Keel in his book called The Mothman Prophecies, which detailed his investigation into the Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant. During his research, Keel reported numerous encounters with mysterious figures known as the Man in Black. He received strange phone calls with mechanical voices and cryptic messages and was visited by individuals in black suits who exhibited unusual behavior and seemed to know details about his research. Witnesses who spoke to Kiel also reported being intimidated by the man in black who attempted to silence them. Kiel believed that the man in black used psychological manipulation to create confusion and fear, planting false information and creating paranoia. In 2002, the book was adapted into a film of the same title starting Richard Gere. Since the same year, Point Pleasant has hosted the annual Mothman Festival, attracting thousands of visitors each year. It's a great way to celebrate the town's legacy and encourage tourism. The now iconic Mothman statue, created by artist Bob Roach in 2003, and the Mothman Museum opened in 2005 are also major attractions. Even though some locals are against the big publicity that the legend has caused, the Mothman has undoubtedly become a modern piece of American folklore, filled by mystery and an unfortunate event that marked the city for years to come. Despite the disaster linked to it, the Mothman has become a beloved mascot. Nowadays, many think of it as a mysterious but mostly benevolent creature. So if you happen to pass through Point Pleasant one day, make sure to grab a t-shirt, try the Mothman pizza, and enjoy some Mothman cookies. And with that, we've reached the end of today's video. If you like what you saw, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.